All right, so I'm on this job here today. The plan is to do a little clearing to get a better view for this house. So the house is here. And if there was less trees here, there would be a view of the mountain. And they want a little more space up here anyway. Just, just they want more of a yard. And um, he was annoyed. Sap was falling on his airstream there. So he wanted those trees gone too. So the customer marked all the trees with white paint that are supposed to come down. And the plan is just to uh, pull, push them over, get the stumps out. All the stumps and brush, he said just push it to the back.
is a 16 footer. So we'll hold it up and we are right about right before between 64 and 81. I'm going to call that 72.
So I've been over there taking down logs, but we're going to do a few other things while I'm here. So they want me to take all the stumps that are over there and kind of dig a ditch right here and move that dirt to the side, then put all the stumps in the ditch, but mound it up like high, like six feet, and then use the dirt I pull out of the ditch to cover up the stumps and make like a natural mound as almost like a privacy fence to for the because there's a house over there but thing we just talked about doing here you could see the roadway over there and everything keeps getting stuck you know that Honda pickup truck just got stuck and that 110 wheeler got stuck a few times and it's been raining so everything's muddy so we want to put a road in and it kind of has to loop around the house like this to here so what we're gonna do is we need some shale so we're gonna try to dig the shale out of this hillside right here And at the same time, that would be making some more space down at the level of the house, which would be an improvement anyway. So hopefully this hill, the whole thing is shale like that, because that's perfect, and it's easy to rip into.
I didn't even get to the mud.
our original Caterpillar built. There's a number on them. I just went to the hardware store and got these. So two of these. These are very close in size. So this belt's got to come off because it's, it's on the wrong side of this belt. These pulleys are on the inside. Well, that should be fine. Notice the few grease fittings in here. So I just finished prepping a pile of material with the excavator and I went to start moving it again with the track loader. but. It's not doing anything. When I turn the key, nothing, no clicks. The only thing that's happening is this amp gauge is going almost to 30, pegging. But it's not, it's not pegging out, it's just... Luckily, they were smart enough to put the wiring diagram right on this one panel here. So this is very helpful for diagnosing, you know, no crank situation. But... You know, I've had jumper cables on it. These batteries are new. But these 30 amps are going somewhere. So something, when I turn that key to start, something's probably getting hot somewhere. Now the reason I'm using this and not a test light is because when I hit that key switch, it's still, that amp gauge moves. So if you use a regular test light, you'll have power everywhere, but it still won't start and you won't know why. What this does is this can actually put a load on something so you can see if something's getting enough amps. So I'll start by hooking it up to this battery. Okay, now you can see the gauge here for volts is in the green and it's good. So now if I push this button here, this puts a load on it. And you can see it's well in the green. That's a good battery. Now what that's doing, that's taking electric from the battery and turn it, running it through a coil here and making heat. And that's how it's able to put a load on the battery. Alright, so let's check the other one. Alright, you can see that's in the green. And it's fine. Alright, let's check out the starter. Alright, so thanks to that nice wiring diagram, I was able to tell this is just a ground, which which is rare. Usually a thing won't have a ground wire like that, but that's a ground wire that goes straight from the battery. And then this terminal here, this is the power straight from the batteries. See, it, it pegs it right out. This thing's not... Alright, this bulldozer has two batteries hooked in series, making 24 volts. This thing's only meant for 12 volts. All right, so this thing here looks like it can handle 24 volts. It can't test amps, but I think I can make this work. I'm gonna get my power from right here, but I wouldn't wanna get ground from right here because the problem is um, that's only 12 volts because this is hooked to the other battery. So what I wanna do is I wanna hook to ground with this terminal instead. All right, so we're ground. 
All right, yeah, so now we, all right, here, I'll show you the difference. So when I hit positive, look, I got 12 and a half volts showing a good battery. Now when I ground it to here, now I got a full 24 volts. And this thing has a nice long wire on it so I can reach anywhere on the machine with this. Here, so this should be a ground. So that's showing ground and this should be our positive right here. And let's do voltage just as. So yeah, we got full. And I jumped this solenoid with a tool that would simulate turning the key. Now, safety tips when you're doing this. Make sure the tractor is in neutral and you wouldn't want, don't be standing in front of a wheel or something. All right, let me just try tapping on it. Sometimes that fixes them. Oh, look at that. I bet you this starts now. I think the solenoid was sticking. I can't reach the key and start it at the same time. All right, well, it looks like I'm ready to work. So I figured it out. The solenoid is just sticking a little bit.
All right, here we are back here, Cody and I, two and a half years later. So let's just uh, check everything out, see how it's doing. So they dug a little pond right here, that's new. Here's that mound I made. Looks pretty good, I guess I should have come in the summer to see it all covered in wildflowers. Look great in here, like with the pond and the little extra clearing. So, so you did a little more. Yeah, and if you notice, we made the pond a question mark, and this is where you <laughs> sit on the point. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. We call it the ponder. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Did you have this lumber milled from trees here? Yeah, yeah. They, so they came and the, like whatever pine we didn't sell or chip or uh -huh. put in there. Mm -hmm. We milled about 7,000 linear feet. Okay. How do you like this little Kubota? I love it, man. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, yeah. great deals. Low, you know, uh -huh. low cost financing, you know, no financing, you know, zero yeah. purchase. I really want to get an excavator. But... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, start somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, everything's looking great in here. I guess. Uh, I guess I'll maybe come back in the spring if you got some more projects for me. That's cool. You're able to pick that up to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to do something fun, water-wise, okay. especially. A really nice water garden. That yeah. Goes into there, kind of flows in.